I see that in our nation. I know that not everybody has um, intelligence enough to make decisions for themselves and to decide why it is that they should stand, despite for reasons why you think that you shouldn't. We're not uh, here to have a, a public debate, but indeed to honor those men and women who um, are laying in the cemetery right now. I pray that they are with Jesus, although I'm not naive, not everyone was a believer, right? However, we're going to honor the sacrifice that they did for this country. It's because of their honor and it's because of their sacrifice that we have the right not to honor them. But because of their honor and because of their sacrifice, that should make us even more have a desire to honor them. Amen? So praise the Lord. Uh, but man, uh, this, this is a special day, and uh, or tomorrow is, is technically, but it's just special in, in my family with my pops being a, uh, a true American hero. G.I. Joe. And uh, uh, praise the Lord. But uh, so this stuff is always, uh, always special to us. So it brings back uh, some awesome memories, some scary memories and stuff like that. But praise the Lord that uh, um, I understand it. And I pray that if you don't, that you would begin to dig in for yourself and not allow media or a movement to begin to sway you in what you should be doing out of respect and honor. Praise the Lord. I'll get off my soapbox. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, uh, uh, the 13th, man, don't forget, man, our 12-year uh, birthday of the church, man. We're going to be rocking and rolling down at the swimming hole. We're going to have uh, have it catered, praise the Lord. Lucia and Barry, praise the Lord. So it's going to be absolutely awesome. Thank you, Jesus. So come out, come out, come out. And if anybody wants to be baptized, get up with us, and we will uh, hold you under water for about roughly three minutes, praise the Lord. That's how long Scripture says until the demons come out. No, I'm picking. But, uh, but if you want to be baptized, man, we'd be honored to do that on that day as well. Um, guys, we are in a sermon series that we are calling uh, Guardrails, where we have been talking about things set up in our lives in the spiritual to protect us. We have guardrails in the physical. They protect us from venturing off in the areas that we need not to be, going off cliffs. Well, so too is it important and crucial for us to have guardrails set up for us in the spiritual to keep us from going into the danger zones, venturing off, and end up falling off into a cliff. So we have these things set up. And we've talked about a handful of different things uh, throughout this sermon series. So if you missed one, man, go back and check it out. I promise you, it's, it, you're, you're enjoyed. It's been a lot of fun. But um, one thing I want to talk about today, I want to talk about uh, the guardrail that we need to set up against being in a hurry. Right? I, I don't know about you guys, man, but I would imagine that all of us have had our life in a crazy mess in one way, shape, or form or another due to the simple fact that we were in a hurry. Trying to do something in a hurry. Right? We hurry up to go here. We hurry up to go there. We, we, we wake up in the morning and hurry up to get the kids ready for school. Hurry up and feed them breakfast. Hurry up and get them dressed. And hurry up and get them in the van. And hurry up and get them to school. And then we got to hurry up throughout our day so that we can get back in time to pick the kids up, to get them back home, to hurry up and do their homework, to hurry up and get them outside for, for playtime for a couple of hours, and then hurry up and get them back in the house. Hurry up and feed them dinner. Hurry up and get them showered and brush your teeth. Hurry up to put them in bed so that you can have a little bit of time for yourself. But then you realize that you got to hurry up and go to bed yourself because you're getting up early the next morning, right? To do this whole process all over again, right? We hurry up and we go to work. We hurry up and we go to the store. We hurry up and we do this. We hurry up and we do that. It's absolutely insane how much of a rush our life is. And truth be told, the thing that suffers the most isn't in the physical, but the thing that suffers the most is in the spiritual, the thing that suffers the most due to us being in a hurry is our prayer life. The thing that suffers the most for us being in a hurry is our, is our reading life. The thing that suffers the most from us being in a hurry is our worship life. Right? We have all this stuff going on that we're in such a hurry that we begin to neglect the most important things to us. And one of the biggest problems with us is that we believe that we have to feel busy because if we feel busy, then we're being productive. Now, early on in ministry, man, I felt like if I had something going on every night of the week, then I was holy. And I was doing this thing for the Lord. If I didn't have a Bible study going, if I didn't have a church service going, then we weren't being productive in Christ. And ultimately what I began to realize through Holy Spirit was he was showing me that he was no longer my God, but the church was. 
that I was replacing the church grounds for his holiness. Right? And it's so easy to do because after all, Lord, we're doing this for you. But then he began to show me, no, you're doing it for you. Because if it was about me, then it would be about me. But you're trying to feel busy and you're, you're trying to feel productive so it becomes less about me and more about you. But people, we live this life where we feel like we have to be busy, where we have to be so productive and we have to be in a hurry now to get everything done. Why? Because we have stacked so much on our plates that now we have no choice but indeed to be in a hurry so that we can get everything done that we have already piled upon our plates. Right? And we do this day in and day out when the truth of the matter is when we end up doing this, we get absolutely nothing done productively. Well, why? Because we're rushing through everything we're doing. We have to begin to wake up and to realize that we have too much on our plates. Bless you. And if we have too much on our plates because we're piling this thing on and that thing on and we're taking stuff off of somebody else's plate and then adding it on to our plate and then we run around like a chicken with our head cut off trying to accomplish everything that we've stacked onto our plates and then we complain that we just don't have any time. We joke on Cindy's brother all the time. Because at, at one point we asked him something and he was like, I just don't have time. I, ju I just don't have time. Right? So now it's, it's a joke amongst the family that we, I just don't have time. We just don't have time. You know what I mean? But like so many of us live our life like that. That we just don't have time when it comes to praying. We just don't have time when it comes to reading. We just don't have time when it comes to worshiping. We just don't have time when it comes to spending time with your kids. I just don't have time, your spouse. I just don't have time, right? And it's not that even we say that because, my God, we're Christians, so we're not going to say, I don't have time to pray. We just do that. We don't say we don't have time. We just live we don't have time. Because let's be real. If you are married and or in a relationship, if you spent the amount of time you spend with God with your spouse or your relationship person, you wouldn't be in a relationship. But this is what we do. Why? Because we're always in a hurry to the next thing. We're in a hurry to accomplish the next thing thing. We're in a hurry to get this done to get here. We're in a hurry to, to get on our knees and to finish praying so that I can then get in the shower and get ready for work and go do that. I'm, I'm in a hurry to bless my food so that I could just hurry up and eat it. So that I could hurry up and get done with that. So that I could hurry up and do the dishes. So that I could hurry up and sit down on the couch. So that I could hurry up and wash my clothes. So that I could hurry up and go to bed. Right? Like we're just always in a hurry. And one of the biggest uh, um, um, devices that the enemy uses to keep us lazy in our walk with Christ is hurry. Be in a 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 hurry. Because we can all admit that when we are in a hurry, we are either one, going to screw something up, or two, forget about something. Because we're so consumed with being in a hurry. Have you ever tried to fill out paperwork in a hurry? Right? You end up signing your name in the wrong spot. You end up filling this out wrong. You end up skipping some. Why? Because you're not really focusing. You're not really paying attention. You're just trying to rush through it. Right? And it's crazy. And our life is far too short for us to live like this. Our life is far too precious for us to live like this. Hurrying and hurrying and hurrying just to get everything done that is on our plates. And when we live like that, man, we're going to end up screwing something up. We're going to end up forgetting to do something. And again, nine times out of ten, it's not going to be something screwed up in the physical. It's going to be something screwed up in the spiritual. It's going to be our walk. It's going to be our connection with the Lord. The most important thing is our walk and our connection, our relationship with Him. And ultimately, when we are in a hurry, that's going to be the first thing that's going to suffer. When we begin to pile on so many things on our plate, man, nobody, right? Like, let's just be real for a second. No one's like, hold on, before I get any of that stuff, I'm going to open my word, I'm going to spend my time, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I do. Okay, yeah, but where's your mind? 
Because if we start our day with the checklist of things we have to do before we start our day with the Lord, then we've already messed up. Because now we're working in the Lord with our schedule opposed to allowing the Lord to work out our schedule. And we do this because we're in such a hurry. Scripture says in Psalms 46, to be still. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. In being still, there is hope. In being still, there is a peace. In being still, there is a joy. In being still, there is a confidence that comes with being still. There's a slowness that comes with being still. The hardest thing to do for us people, if you're like me, who's always in a hurry, the hardest thing to do is to slow down. Why? Well, then I just don't feel productive. I don't feel like I'm doing this right. And I don't feel like I'm going to get this done. But yet Christ isn't telling us to hurry. He's telling us to slow down, to be still. What we have to begin to do after we start our morning off with the Lord, we then have to begin to ask ourselves, God, uh, evaluate my schedule. Is there things on here that, that, that could be done different? Is there things on here that I really don't need to be doing at all? Are there things on my schedule that I could honestly begin to eliminate? Are there things on my schedule that aren't even fruit bearing? But indeed will cause the fruit to be bruised. It will cause the fruit to begin to turn rotten. Like are there things Lord that I need not to be doing? We have to begin to slow down. Not hurry up, but slow down in life if we're honestly going to begin to enjoy life. He says, man, that, that I will give you life and life to the abundance. The word he uses is Zoe. I will give you that God-like life. God's not in a hurry. And we see that, and we'll touch base on that here in a second in Scripture. But God is not in a hurry. So if we're going to live that God-like life, we have to stop being in a hurry. Stop hurrying up and hurrying up and hurrying up and actually begin to slow down so that we can actually begin to enjoy life. Me and my bride, live, my, my beautiful bride, live a very busy household. And, and sometimes it's chaotic, but it's like a beautiful chaos, if that makes sense, right? And it's, it's a, an, an organized, if you would, busyness, if that makes sense. It's a slow busyness. Yes, we're constantly busy because we have three gremlins. But it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful busyness. Today I'm, I'm getting ready, right? And, and, and everybody's trying to tell me something. And I'm like, hold, hold on, I'm trying to get ready. And she's like, but daddy, look, but daddy, look, but daddy, look. And, daddy, and I'm like, oh, I'm trying to fix my hair so I look pretty. And uh, you know, daddy, look, daddy, look. And uh, uh, so I look and she goes, I have nipples like you. <laughs> I was like, oh gosh. I said, yes, you do. Now go put a shirt on. You know what I'm saying? Like, but like you just miss out on things. Like your kid's telling you that they have nipples. If you're too busy, right? And I'll be real with you, man. Since COVID, that has been the best thing to happen to me and my family. This whole pandemic has been absolutely freaking beautiful. Why? Because it made a lot of us hurry up people, slow the freak down. Hello, and you had no choice. My God is good. <laughs> right? But think about that, man. It's been absolutely amazing. I believe that, that when COVID hit, it began to transform me and my beautiful bride and, our, and our, our beautiful family to live the best life possible. And it's been amazing. It's been amazing. Now, one thing I like too, man, is, is if there's anybody, I know Denise is weird like this uh, because she's, she's, made, she's just weird, but she's also weird like this, praise the Lord, because she's made this statement before. But uh, who in here likes cemeteries? Right? Well, there's a handful of us weird folks. Some people are like, oh my gosh, that's where the dead live. No, that's where the dead lie. They don't, they don't live there. They're dead. <laughs> 
<laughs> but anyway, but, but what's so cool to me about cemeteries, man, is, is like you get to look at the tombstones and like the dates. Like it's so crazy when you begin to look at the dates, but the craziest thing to me about the tombstone is when you look at the date of their birth to the date of their death is that dash, right? And how did that person feel that dash? Like what did they do with that dash that they had from their birth date to their death date? Because everything in their life, everything in our life is in the dash. So in our life with that dash, how indeed are we fulfilling it? For some of us, it's just that. You're dashing through life, never enjoying it but dashing from one thing to another. And, and, and since your birth date to your death date, all you're doing is dashing. And at the end of your life, because it's going to come, you're going to have a life of regret because you never truly enjoyed life. Why? Because you are constantly in a dash. I've seen a quote and it's pretty cool. It says, men, most men pursue pleasure with such breathless haste that they hurry right past it. That's crazy if you think about that. And it is so true. Most men or women, we pursue this, this life of pleasure, this life of joy, this life of peace. Nobody in their right mind pursues to be a slave to work, a slave to money. You end up doing that, but that's not your intention. Maybe the money thing is you want to better your family, but then next thing you know, man, you become such a slave to it. And we become such a slave to pursuing the pleasure. We, we become so, uh, uh, um, um, uh, we have this desire to, to pursue this walk with Christ. And then before we know it, man, we've actually pursued right past Him. Because we have been pursuing in such a breathless haste that we don't actually slow down to enjoy Him. I got to do this and I got to do this. If I don't read X amount of passages of scripture a day, then I'm not doing it right. If I don't pray X amount of times a day, then I'm not doing it right. If I don't go to church this amount of times a month, then I'm not doing it right. If I don't put this amount in the tithe plate, then I'm not doing it right. If I don't do this, if I don't do that, if I don't do this, if I don't do that. And we begin to put all these regulations on Christ in our pursuit of Him that we actually never pursue Him. We're pursuing what we think of Him. We're pursuing a religious belief opposed to the person of Christ. And we've piled all this religious stuff upon our plates that will slam the door and never really allow us to experience Him in the first place. And it's sad, but we do this every single day. And for most of us, in our minds... We believe that if I just hurry up today and get everything done, then I'll be able to chill tomorrow. I'll be able to relax tomorrow. I'll be able to uh, 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 kick back and, and, and enjoy life a little bit tomorrow. If I just hurry up right now, then I can enjoy it later. But the sad thing is, the enemy makes sure that later never comes. Because what most of us do is the moment that we begin to clear something off of our plate, we put something right back on it. Okay, I got this done, but now I could do this thing that I've been trying to do for how long now? And we begin to add more upon our plate. So tomorrow never comes. That freedom never comes. That, that slowness never comes. That peace never comes. Right? Why? Because we're piling more upon our plate. But the only way that we're ever going to truly begin to enjoy life is to no longer hurry up, but in to, indeed to begin to slow down. Again, Ephesians tells us to imitate God. So if we are to imitate Him, we have to ask ourselves, is God in a hurry? We can all agree that no, He's not. God is not in a hurry. Right? We see that. We feel that. We know that. We see that in the life of Jesus 30 years before He stepped into His ministry. He wasn't in a hurry. Three years after his ministry before he went to the cross. We see in scripture that God hasn't come back yet. That God hasn't ended this world yet. We could all admit 
that if some of us were God, the world would be over. <laughs> right? We would just be done. Ah, the hell with ya. You know what I'm saying? Like, absolutely insane. But God is not in a hurry. We see that we read that in Scripture. And praise the Lord for that. Because my God was not in a hurry, I had the opportunity for repentance. I had the opportunity to know Him. And that's why He's not in a hurry. Because He doesn't desire that one should perish. Right? But so many of us are in such a hurry in our day-to-day -day lives that we forget that our God is slow in coming back because He desires not one to perish. We're more concerned with man setting up that church fundraiser than we are out there ministering to the one who's about to perish. We're more concerned about this thing or that thing and, and rocking our Christian tea just right more, uh, more than spreading the gospel to a community who doesn't know Jesus. And he's slow in coming back so that those people who are just like us, lost, dazed, and confused until we met Jesus, would have the opportunity to meet Jesus. Right? So praise the Lord that God is not in a hurry. But if I am going to imitate God, then that means I must stop being in a hurry. Our God takes his time. Right? Now, it's cheesy and cliche. Everybody says that he's never late. Right? Praise the Lord. But he's also like never early. <laughs> like no one's ever like, God, I just wish... <laughs> My gosh, well, I didn't even get a chance to get it out of my mouth yet. Now you really delivered that early. You know what I'm saying? It's like sometimes we feel like we're just on our face for so long asking God to move, but he's never late. But truth be told, he's always on time. Right? We see this time and time and time again. But you know what else is crazy about God? Because he's not in a hurry? Is he expects, he expects us to be patient while we wait. That's tough, man. But our God expects us to be patient while we wait. Be still and know that I am God. Do you know the hardest thing in life to do is to be still? Why is it when you play hide and go seek, the very moment you hide, you have to pee? <laughs> right? You get the best spot. You're like, boy, they're never going to find me. <sighs> Lord, I hope they hurry up and find me. You know what I'm saying? Like it's crazy. The very moment you find that spot, you pee. Or have you noticed the very moment someone says, don't move, now everything on your body itches. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. The bottom of my foot is itching and it's driving me crazy. Be still. I can't, I can't be still. I just can't be still anymore. You're like, what are you doing? I told you to be still like five seconds ago. I can't. Oh my gosh. It's like I have scabies. You know what I'm saying? It's like just <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. Right? It's absolutely insane. But it's the truth. Right? He wants us to be still and know that I am God. Not be in a hurry and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Because God knows that if we are not still, we are not going to know him. Real talk. We're going to be far too busy, too much in a hurry to even acknowledge him. To stop and realize that right in front of our face is him. And we have the opportunity to experience an encounter with him. But if we're in such a hurry, uh, excuse me, excuse me. And we're going to go off and do whatever it is that we felt like we had to do. And we're missing God at that very moment because we're rushing right past him. And two, because the God in the person standing before us doesn't fit the God that we claim we know. Oh God. Yeah, God's not that color. Oh God wouldn't, God wouldn't dress like that. Oh God wouldn't do their hair like that. Oh, God wouldn't live there. So we never experience God because we have this 
hurriness about us that we automatically already know what God looks like. Meanwhile, we're passing God every single day. Right? And it's insane. And we do this because we're in such a hurry. Opposed to just stepping back and experiencing God. You look at nature. Nature experiences God every day. The trees and the, the flowers and this, all this stuff in nature is beautiful. They're never in a hurry. Right? Like you never see the trees going, oh, can I change my leaves already? This is ridiculous. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. I was trying to get gas yesterday, last night, and I was behind this car and, and it was going like... 20 miles per hour and the speed limit was 35. It was driving me slam crazy to the point where I went like <laughs> I went, oh my gosh, this dude is driving me freaking bananas. You know what I'm saying? But why? Because I was in a hurry. Now I should have pulled him over just be, you know, <laughs> and then passed him. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, like, but like you get like that, like, oh my gosh. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because we're in a hurry. So then slower people annoy us. Right? Why? Because we're in a, it's their fault. I'm in a hurry. And you didn't know it. You should be in a hurry too. Now they should have been in a hurry. Right? I was trying to get gas. But like it's absolutely insane, man. But like when we look at nature, nature is never in a hurry. There was one time... Uh, a squirrel was not in a hurry, and uh, he was in the middle of the road. And I had, a, <laughs> I had a four coworkers with me. And uh, uh, my man said, uh, Marcos. He goes, ¿Qué pasa, mi amigo? A squirrel. And I said, Hey, man. I said, Hey. I said, Hey, watch this. Knowing the squirrel was gonna move, and I hit it, and 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 the squirrel comes up like this. And I'm gunning it, right? I'm like, the squirrel's going to move any moment. And it didn't. And literally, I ran him over like this. So I just flattened him. And in my mind, I was like, wow, that was really wrong. And I look back, and they're like, que pasa, mi amigo? Why did you do that? I said, guys, I promise, I thought he was going to move. No, oh, that's not right, man. <laughs> I was like, I know, I kind of feel you on that. You know what I'm saying? And I wouldn't have done it if y'all weren't in my car. It's your fault. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but like, it's absolutely crazy, right? So he wasn't in a hurry. So you should be in a hurry or you're going to get flattened. No, I'm playing. But, <laughs> I did. but, but, right? Because I hurried up, man, I ended up killing this annoying nuisance. You know what I'm saying? And, but my point is, in life, hurrying is going to destroy the quality of our life. Because we are constantly in a hurry. Me and, me and my, uh, my family, man, we love to go on the nature trail. Right there at the, uh, the, the mouth of Wanchis or go, going into Wanchis. But you go on that little nature trail. Now, we've been there at times where it's like, all right, we have a few minutes to kill. The kids want to go on this walk, so come on. <laughs> well, look at this and look at that. Oh, isn't that awesome? Yeah, well, <laughs> there's poop. Must be a wild hog. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's just miserable when you're rushing through it. Why? Because it wasn't created to be rushed through. It's created to kick back and chill, man. And to enjoy the walk. Just like our walk with Christ. Wasn't created to be rushed through. Scripture says man that they walked with Christ. Or with God in the cool breeze in the garden. Right? They walked with him. They didn't rush through it with him. We must slow down in Jesus name. Or we are going to regret the dash that we have. Right between our birth date and, and our death date. We must begin to slow down. Today, not tomorrow. Because in tomorrow it's going to be not today, but tomorrow. We must begin today to slow down. To stop hurrying past God. To stop hurrying past his creation. To stop hurrying past his people. To stop hurrying past uh, uh, his, his, his creation, our, our spouses, our children. But we must indeed slow down and enjoy them. 
slow down is hard I get it I'm preaching to myself but every day I'm learning more and more on how to do this and every day I have to learn more and more on how to do this but slow down have you ever moved to something so fast that you even forgot why you even moved to that thing in the first place right I will be standing there using the bathroom and before I'm done I'm flushing the toilet why that's stupid because I want to hurry up and flush the toilet before I'm parking my car, my door's open. Like, right? It's, it, you do silly things, but it's like, I just got to get out of my car right when I park it. Like, this is crazy. You can't, you, know, you can't sit there for a few seconds after you park. You got to be out. You know what I mean? And it's just like we do this every single day in a hurry. And you know who's not in a hurry in my family? It's Johnny. <laughs> my brother-in-law is there. He's not in a hurry. Right? And truth be told, sometimes, man, my sister's just ready to pull her hair out of her head. Right? Like, oh, we'll get there and we'll go in somewhere. I'll get there and be like, uh, where's Jay? Huh, he's in the freaking bathroom. He had all morning to do this, but he decides to do it now. <laughs> then he gets out and he's like, hey, man, what's going on? I'm pouring some tea. You know what I'm saying? What's going on, dog? You know, I'm going to take the dogs out and, man, hey, you have a good ride over here? And like, everyone's like... <laughs> he's like doo, 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 doo. sometimes I think he does it to mess with us <laughs> these hurry up people are slowing down now you know what I'm saying? but again it goes back to we get so frustrated at the slow down people but why because we desire that we desire to be the slow down person maybe not the person going 20 but we desire to be a slow down person Johnny enjoys life. Why? Because he's not always rushing through it. But he's kicking back and he's chilling. And the sad thing is, is for most people, they're in such a hurry with nowhere to go. They're in such a hurry and they don't even know where they're heading. And it's sad. We're in a hurry, we're in a hurry, we're in a hurry, we're in a hurry. When all we have to simply do is slow down. We have to change our, our mindset, change our lifestyle to slow down. Yes, it's going to be hard, but I promise you that it's also going to save your life. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. We have to have these guardrails set up to protect us in life. And sometimes we have to have these guardrails set up to protect us from people in life. Because you're always going to have that person that wants to pawn off something on you. And you have to have these guardrails set up so that you can say no. Because in your no, you're protecting your joy. You're protecting your peace. You're, you're protecting your plate from being overloaded. But where's that line? Well, that line is if you begin to feel pressure with what it is that you're being asked to do. If you don't have peace, then the answer should say no. And if that makes them mad, oh well. Because your peace, your peacefulness is far more important than their happiness. So if you have to say no, praise the Lord, say no. And have that guardrail set up so that your plate don't get overloaded, so that you're not hurrying up through life, missing out on what it is that God has for you in the first place. And the main person, as Joyce Meyer said, the main person you'll have to say no to is yourself. Is yourself. We have to say no to self. And that's the hardest person in the world to say no to. We have to begin to beat down our flesh. Remember, Jesus says, Come to me, all who are weak and weary, and I will give you rest. We talked about it last week. Come to me, all who are weak and weary, and I will give you rest. Rest. Not I will put more on your plate for you to rush through it. He says, rest. But if we're in a hurry, we're not resting. If we're in a hurry, we're not being still. If we're in a hurry, we're not waiting on the Lord. But yet it's in our resting, it's in our being still, and it's in our waiting on the Lord that we actually see the Lord. That we feel the Lord, that we experience the Lord. It comes in those things. Every morning we have to decide to do this. Every morning it's up to us, not the world, not the enemy. It is up to us. How busy, how, how, how uh, 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 um, chaotic do I want my schedule to be today? 
And if you start the morning off with your schedule opposed to starting the morning off with God, it's going to be hectic. Well, I like to end my day with God. Well, I like to experience my day with God. Hello. It's not just in the morning because my marriage wouldn't work if I only spoke to my wife in the morning. My marriage wouldn't work if I only spoke to my wife at night. Ask her. I will talk all stinking day long. <laughs> to the point where sometimes she's like, oh my God, baby. Like she's told me before, hey babe, do you think that you could just be quiet for five minutes? Well, I hope those five minutes hurries up. You know what I'm saying? She's like, one, two, three, hush, puppy. You know what I mean? And it's absolutely insane. But I want God to be like, oh my gosh. Frank, can you like give me five minutes, bro? For real. For one, two, three, hush, puppy. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I want to talk to him so much that that's the game he wants to play with me. But oftentimes, man, he's the last one I speak to. Because I'm in such a hurry to do everything else. Nothing good comes out of being in a constant hurry with your schedule. There's not one added benefit, but there is indeed, as I get ready to close, there is indeed some very unhealthy disadvantages of being in a, hel- in, in a hurry. Stress. You begin to uh, harm your relationships not taking time with your spouses or your friends and then we wonder why at the end of the day we don't have them I, I don't understand I, I, I work 70 hours a week I don't understand why my marriage didn't work well let's start with the 70 hours a week well I, I don't understand why like like my kids won't talk to me I know maybe it's because every time they've tried to talk to you you just don't have the time I don't understand why I don't have any friends. Well, because every time your friends are trying to do something with you, you just don't have the time. Like we have to begin to stop being in a hurry. Being in a hurry causes us to ignore the most important people to us. And most importantly, being in a hurry causes us to ignore the most important one to us, which is Christ. We have to begin to realize that being in a hurry is a trap from the enemy. Being in a hurry uh, um, um, causes us to be in a trap against our family. How many of you guys have ever been at the dinner table and in your mind you're going, man, I can't, I, somebody text me, oh, I, I got I to gotta get to my phone, I got to see who it is that text me. Your kids in the middle are telling you something and, and, and you're just so lost because you're on your phone that you're not even really paying attention to them. And then they walk off and we're like, that's so good, baby. But meanwhile, they're crushed because mommy and daddy isn't paying attention to me because that cell phone in their hand is far more important than me. Well, it's not that. Daddy's just got to answer this very important call. Daddy's got to answer this very important text. Oh, I get it because that's more important than me. And that's the message we begin to get off, give off. Why? Because we're in a hurry. We can't do this with our kids. We can't do that with our kids. Why? Because we're in a hurry and it's a trap. Right? And this happens to us day in and day out. If we're in a hurry to get our kids from this stage in life to this day, I can't wait for them to get in this stage. Trap. I can't wait for my life to be here. Trap. Because God wants you to experience Him right now. And we do all these things that ultimately put us in a trap. And God is going, just be still so that I can show you who I am. You're too busy. You're too busy. You're too busy. No, you're not. Ask yourself, when was the last time you went on a date with your spouse? With the person you're in a relationship with? When was the last time you took your child out on a date? When was the last time you just spent ultimately like, like quality time with them? Like when is the last time we took time to spend with the Lord? We have to understand that if God is not in a hurry and we are to imitate God, then we are not to be in a hurry. So being in a hurry is not of God, but indeed of the enemy. I want us, I desire for us, church, to be able to look back at the dash in our life and not regret regret a single thing but to be able to go man i enjoyed life 
when my kids move out, I don't want to regret that they now have their own lives and I didn't get to spend mine with them. I want to spend my life with my kids. I never want when, when uh, 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 me or Cindy, when one of us go to be with the Lord, if it's not at the same time, if one goes first, I don't want the other one to regret not doing things with this spouse because we were just always in a hurry to do something else. I don't want that. Listen, I'm sure it's annoying, but I will tell you if we were on the phone, I will tell you before we get off or even in person, I love you. Why? Because you never know when the last time you're going to have the opportunity to say that. Taught that from my mom and my dad. If I love you, I'm going to let you know it. Right? It might be annoying to you. You don't even have to say it back. But I'm going to say it. Why? Because, man, I'm not going to be in such a hurry that I'm not going to tell you the most important thing. And that's the point that I love you. Because being in a hurry causes us to miss the most important things in our life. It causes us to be grouchy and impatient. Quick to anger. Come up with excuse making. And the crazy thing is, is the society we live in, we don't even realize it. We're just constantly in a hurry. Why? Because we're brainwashed to believe that that's a normal way of living. But it's not. Being in a hurry is not a peace giver, it's a peace stiller. And Jesus, who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to me except the Father. Jesus, who says to be still in him. Jesus, who says to wait. Jesus, who says, I give you peace, not as the world gives you, is the only one who can give us peace if we come to him. Not in a hurry to pass by him, but to be still. Jesus left us peace, so it's our responsibility to enjoy that peace. And we're not going to do that by rushing through it. We're going to only do that by simply slowing down. Being still in Him. And allowing His presence to begin to cause the hurriness in our life. To be rearranged so that we stop hurrying up and begin to slow down. Declare today. Today I'm going to enjoy you first and foremost, Lord. And then my life. I'm not going to hurry through it anymore. Because at the end of the day, I'm responsible for my peace, for my joy, for my hope, for the way that I spend my time. And Lord, first and foremost, I want my time with you and I want my time with my family. And that comes not by hurrying up, but by ultimately slowing down. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. God, we praise you. We love you, Lord. You are absolutely amazing. Help us to slow down, my Lord Jesus. Help us to be a people, God, who are not in a rush. But a people who will experience the rush of your presence as we slow down. God, help us, my Lord Jesus, to re realign our schedules. Help us to spend our day with you, with our families, God things that just bring us true joy not a false sense of joy help us not to speed through life God but to enjoy the process of life and God the only way that will happen is if we experience the life giver himself help us not to hurry past you to rush past you to speed past you but God to slow down so that we can indeed experience. Does anybody here today who wants to experience Jesus? Simply open up your heart right where you're sitting. And Lord, we thank you for those right now who are opening up their hearts to you this very moment to experience you. Not rushing at this very moment. But God, taking a few seconds, God, to slow down to open up their hearts to receive you. And Lord, I thank you that right now that you are transforming their lives as Holy Spirit begins to, to uh, uh, occupy their heart, my Lord Jesus. God, as their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, simply because they slowed down to experience you, Lord, we thank you for that. We salute you for that. We salute them in Jesus' name. And Lord, we are so grateful for them to be added to our family. Lord, bless them. 
teach them how to slow down. Lead God and direct them in their slowing down. When they're in a hurry, quickly remind them to stop, to breathe, to be still, to wait, to slow down and experience you. God, we thank you and we pray. And our God's baby said, Church, you may stand to your feet. We're going to get back into worship. Listen, if you want prayer, we have some beautiful people who would love to pray with you. Ties and offering buckets are there in the back. If you're online, you can do it online. But listen, church, we love you guys. But most importantly, please remember,